Hi, and welcome to our second season of Environmental Education. I'm your host, Christina Moffitt. And I'm Sean Gerhard. So to start off our show, I figured we could talk about our favorite thing over summer. So Sean, did you do anything interesting or what did you do over the summer? Well, here's the key. It's what I didn't do over the summer, and that was nothing. I worked, I went to the gym, and I slept for 12 hours a day. That's the best summer I could have asked for. Yeah, making money, getting rest, getting ready for school. So you can't complain about that. No complaints here. All right, well, that's good to hear. What about you? Um, so I did a little bit of traveling. Um, I started off the summer going to Los Angeles and then Delaware for the Firefly Music, Fest Music Festival, my second time, that was a lot of fun, and then ended off the year with going to Florida, or ended off the summer. What okay. was the best trip then, out of the three? Um, I'm gonna say Florida, I had a little more time there. Um, I got to see my cousin who's doing the Disney College program, so that was definitely probably my favorite. But Sounds like fun. California was a lot of fun too. So, if you've been watching our show since last season, we wanna thank you, and to those New to our show, thank you as well. To briefly explain our show, we discuss different environmental issues, provide insights and tips on how to improve our one and only Earth. To bring us up to date, we want to discuss a few environmental events that occurred since our last show. As many of you hopefully know, a large amount of the Amazon rainforest was lost. Due to fires, approximately 7,200 square miles were lost, according to National Geographic. That combined total adds up to be about the size of New Jersey. The Amazon rainforest is the world's largest rainforest, and unfortunately more than a soccer field's worth is falling every minute, according to Brazil's National Institute for Space Research. This is due to deforestation. Deforestation is the act of purposely removing groupings of trees or forests to use for other purposes. About 70% of deforestation is for cattle ranching, according to Manga Bay. This means that people are setting parts of the Amazon on fire in order to use the land to raise cattle, ultimately for consumption. The reason deforestation is a problem is because these fires put carbon dioxide into our air, which is one of the leading causes of climate change, and causes loss of habitat. Some ways that we can prevent or lessen this from happening is to cut back our meat consumption. So it's really sad um, that this is going on, and a lot of people just believe that it was because of rising temperatures causing it, causing it, but unfortunately, it was on purpose to use the land. Um, so it's really sad, and it's especially sad that it's really just for money. You it's know? crazy to me that people deliberately would light our best oxygen producers on fire for cattle. And, you know, that I was amazed you know, when we were prepping for this show to read that people purposely setting the fire, uh, setting the uh, woods on fire, to, Amazon, I can't speak right now, the Amazon on fire. Um, so that was something that really jumped out to me, and I thought it was insane to purposely burn for cattle purposes. Definitely. It, it's just, you know, a lot of people in politics really just care about the money aspect so that they don't care about, you know, this precious rainforest that we have, and they just want to use the land to raise cattle so that they can sell it for meat because the rainforest isn't necessarily giving them money, but if they were to transform it into cattle ranching and raising these animals, they are gonna get money from it. So it's really sad to see that. Sad and extremely messed up. Definitely. But moving on, we look across to the other side of the world. The Russian Federation has accepted the Paris Agreement and is becoming a full-fledged participant of this international instrument. Russia is already playing a leading role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions compared to the 1990 baseline. The total emissions over this period has decreased almost by half. Russia is making another colossal contribution to combating CO2 emissions and CO2, CO2 sequestration, which is not reflected in the contributions, but is a crucial factor in the effort. These are Russia's boreal forests, which are the lungs of the planet. Russia recognizes the importance of the climate problem, and Russia does not oppose the anthropogenic impact of climate change, which is really important for many reasons being, and those who don't know the anthropogenic, that term means human-caused climate change, and you know, Russia taking one of the first steps that should have been taken a long time ago, but it is a step in the right direction. Definitely. I was really happy to see that Russia, Russia joined this um, Paris Agreement because it's actually really great that a lot of nations are signing this agreement, um, I believe when I looked, there was 
13 that still hadn't, and Russia was listed as one of those, and that was in August. So this is very recent news that Russia has signed this agreement, and it's really great that they're taking part and, you know, trying to improve our climate. And, you know, a term that we said, the lungs of Russia, meaning, you know, we hinted it when we were talking about the Amazon not just a second ago, uh, that how much oxygen comes from these deep forests, and Russia is covered in them. So it's nice to know that those natural oxygen producers are going to be protected now under the Paris Agreement. And it's a step in the right direction, but we're not completely there yet. Definitely. And I believe I saw that Russia was uh, like the top four uh, emitter for these negative reasons towards climate change. So hopefully we will be heading towards the right direction in signing this agreement. Fingers crossed. Definitely. So next, I would like to discuss a young girl who aims to live a low carbon emission, emission lifestyle and was named one of the world's most influential teams by Time Magazine, according to TED.com. This environmental and climate activist is Greta Thunberg. Thunberg's popularity began from striking outside the Swedish parliament, which is where she's from, to call for more action on climate change. At only 16 years old, she has been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize and spoke at the United Nations Climate Talks, according to livekindly.co. Greta Thunberg is a really um, amazing person, very popular right now in discussion, and it's really awesome to see that someone so young is really trying and pushing for these environmental movements. And unfortunately, a lot of people aren't necessarily respecting her. I don't know if it's because of her age or being a woman, but um, it's really sad to see that a lot of people aren't really taking her seriously, but it's so amazing that she's pushing for this at such a young age and impacting so many people's lives and influence a lot of the younger generation to be a part of this. And, you know, it is truly amazing because you forget that she's just a 16-year-old girl. The hardest decision I had to make when I was 16 is if I wanted nacho cheese Doritos or Cool Ranch Doritos. Exactly. This girl is speaking at the National Climate Convention, and it's honestly amazing. You could see um, when she was speaking there, she was nervous, but she was also powerful with her repetition of the How Dare You speech. I thought mm -hmm. that really was impressive by her because that's a, you know that was a really good speech for a 16-year-old girl and you know people forget how young that is to be making such big movements like that she even got to sh shake Barack Obama's hand I know we were talking about that earlier I just how could you critique her even exactly. if you don't agree with you know the science of climate change how could you be against this girl for standing up and speaking out on an issue that affects everybody in the world because stuff we do in the United States is directly affecting the climate everywhere. And that goes for everywhere in the country. So good for her for standing up at such a young age and letting her voice be heard. Definitely. And just think about, you know, like you said when we were 16, just think about the places that you, that you are when you're 16 and your mindset. You're not necessarily thinking about traveling across the world in a zero emission sailboat to come speak at the United Nations. That's, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. But good for her. I'm so happy that she was able to do that. She actually refused to speak with Donald Trump because she believed that it would be a waste of time. And she did meet with Barack Obama. And he was kind of like, you know, we're in this together, which I thought was amazing. Um, they did a little fist bump uh, at the end of their meeting. Um, but I'm just so happy to see that someone is really pushing for this at only 16 years old. And her speech, I thought, was very powerful in that she was, you know, saying that how dare you take away this from me that she should be in school and she's here trying to show these this older generation what has needed to happen for so long and finally she's pushing for it to actually happen definitely if you haven't seen the interview i definitely recommend you going to check it out um, we're going to take a quick break we'll be back with an environmental quiz game and now let's have a look at this video of greta thunberg's address at the united nations summit break my message is that we'll be watching you. <laughs> this is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. 
People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away and come here saying that you're doing enough when the politics and solutions needed are still nowhere in sight. You say you hear us and that you understand the urgency. But no matter how sad and angry I am, I do not want to believe that. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil, and that I refuse to believe. The popular idea of cutting our emissions in half in 10 years only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees and the risk of setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. 50% may be acceptable to you, but those numbers do not include tipping points, most feedback loops, additional warming hidden by toxic air pollution or the aspects of equity and climate justice. They also rely on my generation sucking hundreds of billions of tons of your CO2 out of the air with technologies that barely exist. So a 50% risk is simply not acceptable to us, we who have to live with the consequences. To have a 67% chance of staying below a 1.5 degrees of global temperature rise, the best odds given by the IPCC, the world had 420 gigatons of CO2 left to emit back on January 1st, 2018. Today that figure is already down to less than 350 gigatons. How dare you pretend that this can be sold with just business as usual and some technical solutions? With today's emissions levels, that remaining CO2 budget will be entirely gone within less than eight and a half years. There will not be any solutions or plans presented in line with these figures here today because these numbers are too uncomfortable and you are still not mature enough to tell it like it is. You are failing us but the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now is where we draw the line. The world is waking up, and change is coming, whether you like it or not. Thank you. Hi, I'm a middle-aged man with an embarrassing problem. I get irrationally angry at a Swedish girl who wants to save the planet. Luckily, there's now a number I can call. Hello, you've called the Greta Thunberg helpline. If you're a grown adult who needs to yell at a child for some reason, the Greta Thunberg helpline is here to tolerate you. She's just fueling needless anxiety. She's making the end of the world sound like it's the end of the world. This whole charade's gone too far. Now I see she's speaking in front of a mock UN. So that was the real UN. So before you go full caps lock in an article comment section, let our expert counsellors assess your situation. Sir, I just need to ask you some questions before we get started. Is your Twitter profile picture an egg? Yeah, yeah, but I just don't have any good photos of my face. 
we'll listen no matter how ridiculous you sound. Well, if she really is such a nice, sweet, caring Swedish girl, how come she can't help me assemble my Billy bookcase? Yeah, but if she's so concerned about renewable energy, how come she doesn't wear one of those baseball caps with the solar panels and the fan on the front? They said this Ladybird film was a comedy. Well, I didn't laugh once. Sir, I think you're after the Greta Gerwig helpline. 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. 99%. I'll patch you through. It's okay. We understand that children acting like adults can make adults act like children. I think if I'm honest, I'm just jealous that she got a free cruise to America. Sir, so she actually sailed there herself. Well, I don't know why she gets to fist bump Obama when I've never gotten to. Have you considered launching your own significant global movement? But it's so much easier to shit on someone else's. We shouldn't be listening to a child. We should be listening to an expert. Oh, right. Well, do you want me to put you through to an expert? Hello? The Greta Thunberg helpline. Because when it comes to climate change, we all know she's the real problem. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, that can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, they can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Listen. I realized that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen.
everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, that can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Welcome back to Environmental Education. I'm here with our two contestants, Josh and Nicole. Thanks for joining our show. Um, so we're gonna play a little environmental trivia game so I want to ask, who would like to start first? I'll be the brave one. All right, well, thank you. So the way it's going to work first. is that there's going to be five total questions, and you're going to have a few seconds to answer each one. You will not be answering the same question, each of you. You each are going to get a different question. Um, so whoever answers the most qu correctly is going to be our winner. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> you too. Thanks. All right, so Nicole. Your first question is, what is the best way to handle plastic and metal waste? Recycle. Correct. Good start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So another solution would be to simply cut our waste in general, but recycling is obviously a good place to start. Good job. Thanks. You were doubting yourself, but you got it. All right. Oh, boy. All right. You ready for this one? Oh, yeah. Question two. What can be put into compost? Um, take, you can take your time. Like, like eating up fruits and like vegetables and stuff that are rotting or something. Correct. Sweet. Awesome. <laughs> cool. So it's uh, food scraps and crop residues. So things like leftover fruits and vegetables, um, yard trimmings, uh, things like that. So it should be made up of three things, which are browns, greens, and water. Browns consist of dead leaves, branches. Greens include grass clippings, vegetable waste, fruit scraps, coffee grinds, things like that. And then the water is very important in providing moisture to break up the organic matter. All right, and now on to you, Nicole. <laughs> Question three. What are some pests that are attracted by rotting garbage on the ground? Flies. Do you have any another one? Um, you can think of. Pests, rotting garbage. You don't want them in your room. Think about it. Spiders. <laughs> Rats and flies. We'll give that to you. <laughs> Good 
one. Well, yeah. I got the I've seen There's a cockroach. Is that an answer? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. it's definitely a pest. Oh, cool. Yeah. But, you know, whatever you would have said, really. Spiders, a lot of them are attracted to, you know, kind of whatever. But, um, cool. Yeah, you got yeah, it right. I don't want spiders right, either. I'll no, take no spiders it. Yeah, me. there's really no explanation for that. They're just, that's what they're attracted to. So, good job. All right, and now for you, we have what can't be put into compost? Um, clothing and glass. <laughs> <laughs> things, yeah. that, things that don't biodegrade or anything. Yeah, okay, correct. Wow, you guys are doing great. You guys are really nervous. <laughs> so... Um, so one of the answers is meat and dairy products, human and animal waste. Yours were correct as well. Um, but this is because of bacteria and the odor will attract these pets that we mentioned as well. And ruin your compost pile. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> yes, and we don't want that. We definitely don't want any bacteria in there. So, and we definitely don't want an odor. That would not be fun. Nope. All right, so the way question five is going to work, since we are tied. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is going to be whoever can answer the question first. Okay. All right, so there are a few types, a few options. I'll say there's four options for the answer. So whoever can call out one of these first is going to be our winner. So we can, like, cut you mm -hmm. off or? Um, as soon as I'm finished. Okay, fair. Yeah. <laughs> that way. All right, you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. All right, question five, the tiebreaker is, what are some living things that make compost through their eating habits? Oh boy. Cows. Um, Guess again. Worms. Ding, ding, ding. Wow. <laughs> the answer was bacteria, insects, worms, and fungi. Good guess though. All right. Yeah. So congratulations, Josh. You are our winner for Thank the environmental you. trivia Yay. game. And your prize is stainless steel reusable straw. Oh, sweet. Woo. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for playing. You, I'll give you one if you want. So just a fun fact, Americans use up to 390 million plastic straws every day. And plastic is not recyclable. So using metal reusable straws is very important. So we can prevent that statistic. Yeah, so I hope you'll use them. Uh, the little will. pipe cleaner is just to stick it in and clean the inside out if you have anything like thick. Obviously, water uh, or like lemonade will run right through, but you right. do want to make sure that you clean them. Yep. Um, and I do recommend, I actually got a little kind of like cloth bag that I kept them in. When I bought them for myself, it came with that. So that's really nice to, instead of using a plastic bag, which would yeah. prevent the purpose. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, so when you're out, you know, pull out your cool yeah, reusable just stick straw. Stick it in your bag. Yeah, keep right, it in cool. your bag and use it. And then when you go out, you can just say, no straw, please. All right, cool, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so thank you so much to our contestants, Nicole and Josh. And congratulations to Josh for winning. Thank you. We both did really great. We got all the questions <laughs> correct. Uh, you just quick beat her a little bit to answering the last one. So great job on that. <laughs> So stay tuned for our next show. We'll put our aprons on and be making a vegan recipe. Consuming vegan meals requires less fossil fuel energy, prevents these large amounts of land and rainforests from being destroyed in order to raise cattle, as well as saves a substantial amount of water compared to a meat diet. We hope to see you at our next show, and we'll show you step-by-step -step on how to make this vegan recipe. So thanks again to our contestants, and thank you for watching.